It is the morning after the White House Correspondents' Dinner, the annual event that celebrates the free press, and where journalists mingle with administration officials, D.C. power players, and a few celebrities. SNL star Colin Jost headlined the event, throwing more than a few jabs at Donald Trump into his set. Of course, President Biden also let loose on his opponent. Take a listen. Trump's so desperate, he started reading those Bibles he's selling. <laughs> then he got to the first commandment. You shall have no other gods before me. That's when he put it down and said, this book's not for me. Age is the only thing we have in common. My vice president actually endorses me. I was about to say the reaction <laughs> shot from Vice President Harris is the whole thing. Joining us now, former White House Social Secretary for the Obama White House, Disha Dyer. She is the author of the brand new book, Undiplomatic, How My Attitude Created the Best Kind of Trouble. Welcome. It's giving, Thank you so I mean, much. a book that uh, the <laughs> former First Lady, Mrs. Obama, even posted on Instagram. Yes, so yes, it's, yes. Uh, not Thank mad you. about it. Um, Disha, what did you think of last night's White House Correspondence Center? What, 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 what you've seen, what you've heard? You've First, been around these. I've been around these a lot. And I think, you know, the thing about it was is that it was entertaining to me because I wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> to sit at home and judge everybody and look at everybody talking to folks and listen to Colin and, and the vice president and see Eugene. It was really great to see him up there. So I loved it because I was sitting at home relaxing, <laughs> uh, getting ready for a party. So uh, while y'all were there, so it was great. It was great. Let me ask you, first of all, congratulations to the two of you all for making for it. For making it. Yes. 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 In a hotel lobby, so. <laughs> David Jolly, uh, even I was skeptical this morning. I, I will admit, I, I know I'm the rookie guy here, but they said you have to show up Sunday morning in case we have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me ask you, though. So you were the, the social secretary for the White House. I was. Your job is to kind of insist on an exacting standard for every movement, every event, every mm -hmm. moment. Mm -hmm. The power of the White House Correspondents' Dinner, mm -hmm. though, inverts that a little bit. It's about the vulnerability mm -hmm. of the president. You mm -hmm. see a president kind of humble themselves, be yes. self-deprecating. Mm -hmm. You see them throw some lines that they couldn't throw in another place, right? right? When he calls Donald Trump a six-year-old, mm -hmm. that's unpresidential in another format, yeah. but it works right. there. Mm -hmm. There's got to be an anxiety piece to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, of course there is. I mean, it's the one time, because we're in a time where people make fun of, you know, both presidential candidates, but right. President Biden, you know, people make fun of him and they say things, and so it's a chance for him to also make fun of himself, right? right. And to, at the expense of everyone, right? Yeah. And that kind of, to me, shows that, like, he's willing, like, to not take himself so seriously when it comes to, you know, being in that kind of environment, and then kind of makes him, humanizes him a little bit, but there definitely is a vulnerability and anxiety, because you also don't know what everybody else is going to say. And they may not be that good at it. They may, <laughs> they not, may not be that good they at it. They may not be that good at it. And they can, you, can see it, you can see a script, but it may change on the fly. You I know? think the lesson so, yeah. last night, never underestimate Joe Biden. Never oh, underestimate no. Joe Biden. No, no, and you no. know what? It was um, this year, the past couple of White House Correspondents' Dinners, I feel like are a little more weighty and yes. serious mm -hmm. than mm -hmm. others. Mm -hmm. This year, obviously, folks are coming out to have a good time, but the dinner raises um, money for scholarships yes. for young journalists. But, but also thinking about just the threat to democracy that we're all living under, the importance of the fourth estate, journalists like mm -hmm. Evan Gershevich, who are still detained, yes, yes. Um, wrongfully detained in other countries. It is literally dangerous to, for, to go out and report, do yeah. the job that journalists have been killed in Gaza. And I was wondering how the White House Correspondents Association and also the president were going to, you know, address the gravity of the moment. And um, uh, the, the president talks about the press, where he, he's, you know, he's, he alludes to, you know, some refer to you all as the enemy of the people. I, I want to play this off for people who maybe didn't hear it. There are some who call you the enemy of the people. That's wrong and it's dangerous. You literally risk your lives doing your job. You do. <laughs> Covering everything from natural disasters to pandemics to wars and so much more. And some of your colleagues have given their lives. And many have suffered grievous injuries. Other reporters have lost their freedom. 
There's something that happens in that room, which mm. is it is a hard room to play to because it is a yeah. big room. Yes. It is a loud room. And so you have a dual audience. You have the people who are actually in the room and you have what I would argue is the more important audience, which is the Americans who are watching at home. We're going to watch this in clips. And so as much there as President Biden is speaking to us as journalists about the importance of the fourth estate, I would argue that really what he's doing is saying to the American people, there is currently an attack on this institution. Mm -hmm you know where that attack is coming from. And I want you, the American people, mm -hmm. to remember just how important the role of the fair and free press is. Yeah, 100%. I think even using the word enemy, I think that because that that resonates with people at home being like, that's that's a, that's a major word to use. That's a heavy word to use. I think, you know, really gets people thinking how serious that it is. Not just, you know, what we're seeing right now, but also disinformation, also just yes. AI. There's all types of things. And so I think that when I heard that even, I was like, I perked up being like, oh, he actually said that. And he said it in this room and with people watching, you know? And I think all types of people watch the Correspondence Center, you know? So I think that it was a chance to really say that and it be was, open about it. It was interesting to me also, the, the sort of one-two punch of mm. the president having done Howard Stern, his his mm. team having made mm, that yeah. decision that, you know, mm -hmm. given that there's this critique of the president not uh, having ample accessibility to the press, that they, one, chose a venue like that, and then you had this as the second piece of it. And I thought one of the most powerful parts of the president's speech last night, to your point about the weightiness of this moment, was the way in which he set the stakes and mm -hmm. almost issued a challenge to the press to consider the way that they cover this forthcoming election. Take a listen. He promised a bloodbath when he loses again. We have to take this seriously. Eight years ago, he could have written off it as just Trump talk, but no longer, not after January 6th. I'm sincerely not asking of you to take sides, but I'm asking to rise up to the seriousness of the moment, move past the horse race numbers and the gotcha moments and the distractions, the sideshows that have come to dominate and sensationalize our, sensationalize our politics and focus on what's actually at stake. Mm. It, it's norm setting, right? It's saying, I know y'all want to talk about <clears throat> poll numbers and who's up, yeah. who's down, but please don't get distracted from the fundamental stakes of this election. This was an incredible moment, I think, because Simone said the context this year is so different than past years, yeah. right? There's always a context. <clears throat> what we saw from Joe Biden is talking about attacks on the press as an example of attacks on democracy. And, you know, look, the American experiment is not guaranteed. Mm -hmm. We're yeah. custodians of it. And if there were bulwarks that were built in, you would look at the courts, and now people are questioning, could the courts really protect democracy in this moment? We have legitimate questions. They put in the Congress to protect democracy, mm -hmm. but this was a Senate that failed to, to convict Donald Trump after J6 and disqualify him from office. They put in a vote of the people, right? And even that now looks like maybe the people want to bring in a strong man. And I think what Joe Biden said to the press is, you might be the last bulwark. Like, mm -hmm. your job this cycle to the media is to ensure that you are protecting the Constitution. You don't have to choose sides, as he said. But the guiding light has to be, what are the constitutional protections that ensure this American experiment continues? It's a powerful night last yeah. night it was yeah. powerful and what i don't i don't know if folks saw this on television but prior to that kelly o'donnell our colleague who is the current white house correspondence association president eugene will take over mm -hmm. this summer um she in her remarks did a kind of a scene setter and a call out to the president Mm -hmm. And and saying like we we it's our job to tell the story. We are cus saying they too are custodians of democracy, mm -hmm. and they are the journalists who cover the White House are the public record, mm -hmm. and we want to interview. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I actually heard that. We definitely we heard that. And we I all you had to see the yeah. 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 I mean, was... and when I when I when she said that, I was just like, okay, girl, okay. <laughs> you know, I think it's one of these things where. She had to communicate that. That's her job. You know, that's what she, that's her responsibility. And this is the platform to do it when you have all of these people in a room. And not only shows that she is part of and sticking up for the press, you know, it shows that like, we hear you, but now you're right in front of us. Like you're right here. You have to hear us. Like, and, and you have to act and you have to make sure that like we have access and we are protected. Um, and so, yeah, but no, we heard, no, we heard that at home. <laughs> did, did, 
Alicia, um, we don't have a lot of time left, and so I want to make sure that we get to talk about you and your, yeah. your book for just a minute. I've heard you say of your time during the mm -hmm. Obama White House that you were thick with imposter syndrome. I was. I was. And it's interesting, because even with the White House Correspondents' Dinner, I think how, how the first time I went, you know, I ran out of there fast. Fast. I didn't think I belonged there. I, I got on the bus on the street and went home. Wow. And, you know, I was just like, it was one of these things where I just felt like I didn't know anybody in the room. I didn't understand what the correspondence dinner was. And it was, it was, you know, just really eating away at me. But the thing was, is I did belong there, right? I am, I am a, a regular person. I am the American people. And so that is the whole, you know, dream about my story about going to the White House as a 31 year old who had dropped out of college and was in community college. It was like, I needed to go there to represent people and to bring the community there and to tell truth. And so, but I suffered from imposter syndrome because we're in Washington and everyone has this law degree and this, that, and third. And I'm like, I don't have any of that, right? But it turns out that I didn't need any of that because what I did have is the qualities to be social secretary. Well, come on then. <laughs> okay, I have my a resume. Yes, the resume. From imposter to impact. Yeah. Ooh, come on, take the No, I yeah. stole those words. I'm saying that's part of the book review. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, because I thought that I was just not qualified. And it turns out, you know, being a hip hop journalist back in the day, which I thought was just this random thing, eight years later, mm -hmm. I'm booking hip hop artists at the White House and using hip hop for education and criminal justice reform. So yeah, so everything that I thought was maybe an imposter had impact. Deisha I'm Dyer, diplomatic. we wanted to have you on. What a perfect yes. day to have you join yes. us again. Thank you for book, having me. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you so much. All right.